ISRO is all set to welcome the new year with its new mission that will study black holes. It is set to launch the X-ray polarimeter satellite to study bright astronomical X-ray sources in extreme conditions. The 25-hour countdown commenced on Sunday for the liftoff, which is scheduled at 9.10 a.m. from the first launch pad at Sri Harikota. Riding on a PSLV C-58 rocket, the launch follows the success of the test vehicle D-1. Alongside the primary payload ExpoSat, 10 other satellites will be deployed in low Earth orbits. Let's understand why this uh, mission and why this launch is significant for Indian space sector. On the broadcast, I'm joined by Mr. Suresh Nayak, former group director of ISRO. Mr. Nayak, good evening. Namaskar. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on Mirror Now. Uh, sir, help us understand why this, this launch tomorrow is significant. Of course, uh, you know, ISRO is going to be ringing in the new year 2024 with this launch. But why is it important? Help us understand its aims and objectives. Yeah, actually, first of all, Happy New Year to you all and your viewers. And ISRO is really giving a great gift uh, for India by tomorrow's uh, mission. Actually, now, you know, ISRO is on the verge of a groundbreaking leap in space, I would say. And uh, it is set to revolutionize X-ray astronomy. Uh, first, let me tell you that, uh, you know, there are uh, stars of different category. Our sun is com that comes under smaller category. There are stars uh, 10 times bigger than the sun. And uh, the bigger the sun... When, uh, you know, they die earlier than the smaller suns, okay? That is, of course, uh, when I say earlier, it is in uh, millions of years' time. And when these uh, big uh, stars, they die out, that happens because of they exhaust their nuclear fuel. Nuclear fuel is nothing but the hydrogen atoms fusion, when two atoms of hydrogen, they fuse together, then there is a tremendous energy is created along with temperature and heat. And that heat, like in our sun and the light, under the great pressure comes towards the outer layers. And then a photosphere is formed and which gives the earth its light and temperature, heat, from the sun. So now this is the nuclear fuel, now which keeps the stars burning and running. When the nuclear fuel gets exhausted, then the big stars, they, because of their pressure inside is uh, lost, they collapse. The weight is so much, gravity is so much that they collapse under their own weight and they are formed into black holes or neutron stars. Okay, that is the first thing. Now, these uh, black holes mm. and neutron stars are very bright uh, sources of X-ray. And because they are huge stars, you know, and uh, there uh, are actually uh, spectroscopy, our uh, uh, polarimetric uh, um, instrument, on uh, ExpoSat is set to measure the X-ray emission from the neutron stars and you know, the surrounding area of the black hole. The black holes, because of their huge gravity, they cannot emit anything, okay? It only goes one inside mm. them, nothing comes okay. out, right? But the surrounding areas of the black holes, there is a very strong magnetic field and jets of uh, charged particles like elect electrons and protons, they are emitted. And they are emitted mostly in uh, X-ray spectrum. So that is one source which uh, yeah. our ExpoSat instrument is going to measure. Another one is, I said, uh, neutron stars. So neutron stars, definitely they yeah. uh, emit uh, X-rays, and uh, I want to mention that uh, the novelty part of uh, this our mission 
is hmm. to explore the polarization of the bright X-ray sources. Polarization is nothing but the orientation of the light which is coming out from the celestial objects. And that helps us to give uh, information about the radiation mechanism and the geometry of celestial sources. And uh, internationally, this study mm. of X-ray polarization is gaining a lot of importance. This we can uh, actually underline by saying that uh, America's, uh, NASA's uh, one uh, uh, mission was launched in 2021 that also was uh, basically containing a polarimeter, X-ray polarimeter. Our India's tomorrow's mission mm. will be the first mission dedicated to the polarimetric uh, aspect and world's second mission in this regard. Okay, so this particular interest in okay. the world globally is definitely increasing. And a big milestone for the country and not just for India, space sectors and scientists, but, uh, you know, the entire world when we talk about the fact that we're only the second space uh, organization and India is only the second country to be trying, attempting to do this. But Mr. Nayak, in terms of, uh, you know, how, how do we understand, like you said, that uh, this is, of course, for astronomical sources, the X-ray and the study of them. Uh, but, you know, uh, help us understand for, for, for the benefit of our viewers uh, in simple language that uh, this would mean that we're helping in the study of deeper space studies or do we also get to see some sort of, uh, you know, results on ground? For example, there are satellites which give us information about weather, about natural disasters, etc. Is this that kind of a launch or is it just related to deep scientific space study? Yeah, uh, let me answer that uh, in a simple words. You see, this uh, basically mission comes under a scientific type of mission. And uh, the objectives of uh, this type of mission is to add to the knowledge of our uh, universe, right? And uh, try to unravel the mysteries of the uh, nature and our universe. Now, these missions, Though uh, they are scientific in nature, they have got a far-reaching uh, impact on the actual applications on the ground. Okay, first thing is uh, nobody so far understands in the world about the polarimetric aspects of the uh, X-ray aspects. I mean, X-ray wavelength coming out from these bright sources. Uh, our exposed site is going to study and look at 40 such uh, big such, uh, I mean big sources which are very bright right and that's a huge type of dimension I can say and uh, coming to the actual uh, uh, applications uh, you see once we understand uh, this mechanism of the emissions coming from uh, outer body I mean uh, this is a cosmic um, uh, rays uh, Ultimately, they will have an effect on satellite communication and navigation, just to give two examples. Also, medical imaging, in, okay. from the point of view of the technology, medical imaging also will greatly benefit by the technology development which has been done in uh, tomorrow's mission. Okay. And uh, there will be some mm. uh, some kind of surprises about the applications also, which uh, are never thought of, okay. uh, you know, 20 years uh, before when the missions are happening. For example, mm. you know, we when we found out uh, existence of water on the moon, right, uh, by means of Chandrayaan-1 mm. mission, uh, we really did not have the full idea about its impact. But today we know that uh, the internationally, the interest uh, in going to moon, particularly in the southern region, is increasing because it has got far-reaching mm. effects like, uh, you know, having mm. a human colony there, which is not going to be a part of science fiction yeah. alone, 
but it and, is and therefore going to mr happen. nayak uh, you know how would you how would you say that the indian space sector has traversed its journey over the years you know uh, from what we were to what we have become uh, we're also planning gaganyaan how would you really uh, describe in a few words if you have to the indian space journey yeah it is really i tell you an amazing journey starting from you know in such a humble way uh, of you know having uh, uh, to work uh, in a old church and carrying our rocket trip parts on the yes. bicycle and testing our satellite in the bullock cart to chandrayaan 3 mission chandrayaan 3 mission is at extreme high end and tomorrow's mission also is uh, only second in the world okay so we have reached uh, we have traveled mm. a enormous path in a relatively short time and you know this has got implications on so many yeah. aspects i will tell you a few things one is actually okay. the technology development itself and uh, as you pointed out it, they have got a lot of spillovers on the ground uh, life earth life that uh, is a separate yeah. field yeah. by itself second thing, Okay. is the private sector so it's is been a tremendous journey real... mr uh, nayak yeah 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 i think uh, not just uh, isro but of course uh, the private sector coming in would also be a big boost for isro uh, i'll have to wrap it up here mr nayak thank you very much for joining us this evening and sharing your perspective and helping us better understand this launch that isro is all set to do a very happy new year to you sir and tomorrow of course uh, hopefully isro will add another feather to its cap and make all of us proud yet again thank you very much thank you very much